Google Docs has, has a few new features that are really great. The first one allows you to draft an email in a Google Doc and then you can almost send it right from the doc. This is super helpful if you want to collaboratively draft and edit an email and then send it out without having to recreate it. The next option is what I want to call smart tables. These are building blocks that allow you to have spreadsheet functionality right in a Google Doc with drop downs and the ability to sort the columns. Let's take a look at how to create these. First off, I'm going to make a new doc with docs.new and then we'll start with the email. There are two ways to insert this email draft. The first is going to insert, choosing building blocks, and then selecting email draft. And the other option is if I type the at sign, I can scroll down to the building blocks option here and choose email draft here as well. Now go to the to field or the CC or BCC. Type an at and you can start typing in the name or email address and when you find them, click on them and you're going to get the email address directly from your contacts. Complete the rest of the information there as needed. And the great thing, of course, is if you're working with someone else on the document, they can edit it with you. When you're ready to send the draft, click on the blue mail icon to open a mail draft right from there and you can go ahead and send it. I don't want to send this, so I'm going to delete it for now. And let's take a look at the next one, the building blocks, or what I like to call smart tables. Just like before, you can go to the insert menu, choose building blocks, and add one of the pre-created smart tables here from the options. I'll go ahead and choose project assets for now. And of course, you can also use the at sign we saw earlier. Type at, go down to the building blocks option. You'll see there are a few options right here, but if I click on the option next to building blocks, I will see all of the options from here. What you get with the smart tables is essentially spreadsheet functionality in a doc with these drop down menus that are added in here and the ability to sort by columns. So the default building blocks give you certain options in the drop downs, but the nice thing is if you click on the little down pointing arrow to choose the drop down that you want, you can also go and add and edit the options right from here. So if I click on this, I can modify any of these as needed. I can modify colors on these. I can add new options or delete options as I need. And when I save them, I can decide to apply that to my entire table if I want, or just that one. I'll apply this to all, and my changes are made there. Once I have the table set up the way I want, when I go to the left side of the table, you'll see the option included here is to insert a new row below. So I can click on that plus sign, and it will add a new row, and you'll see it gets the drop down and everything else I set up in the table right in the row built in. I can do the same things with columns. So if I need a new column, I can come up to the header here, click on the insert column to the right option, and I will get a another column. I'm going to undo that though. The really smart thing about these tables is not just that you can add content to them, but then you can sort them almost like a spreadsheet. So if I want to sort this table by the status column, if I hold my mouse over that status column, there's a little toolbar that hovers up here, including a sort table option. So when I click on that, I can choose to sort the table either ascending and descending by this column. That really helps me find out what I need to address first. Now I'm going to add a bunch of more rows here in another way. If I right click on the table, you'll see several table options come up in here. I have options to add rows in here. You can see options about sorting, distributing the spacing on my table, and also an option to jump into table properties. But what I wanted to do was go ahead and right click here and I want to actually add more rows so that you can see what happens to these tables when they start to span more than one page. And because my very first row is pinned, I can click this to unpin it. So it's pinned right now. And so it will repeat on the top of every new page. Now, one thing that you might not realize is you can create your own table without using the building blocks as well. And you can incorporate a lot of these features. So on the bottom here, I'm going to use the insert table option at the top here. You'll see that table templates here are also available from this menu, but we're going to do this manually. And I'm just going to start with a two by two table. 
and it just adds the blank table. So I'm going to go ahead and add headings here. I'm going to say the same thing kind of before, link and status, and you can add drop downs of your own to this. So to do that, I'll put my cursor where I want it in the table, click insert, and there's a new drop down option in the insert menu. When I click on that, I can choose any of the configurations that are pre-created for me, these presets, or uh, anything I've created in a doc before, or I can create a new one. So I'm going to click on a new drop down, and this is just going to give me a kind of a blank slate here I can fill in with my options. I'm just going to make this a yes and a no. So I'm going to color the yes green and the no red, and I'm going to get rid of the other options here. I could add them back if I needed them. I could reorder them if I needed them. That's just the way I want it now, and I'll go ahead and click on save, and I'll see that dropdown now appears in my table. Just like before, there is an option to pin the header, so if I want that to show up on every page, I can do that. I can add columns, I can sort by columns, and I can add rows as well and move them around just like before. The main difference that we have now is just the, the appearance of this. But remember, if I want to modify the appearance of this at all, I can right click on it and go into Table Properties. So if I want that header to have kind of a different background color, I'll highlight the header row, go to Cell Background Color, and choose kind of a light gray from there. So that looks a little bit different then. And then if I want to get rid of the borders, I'll highlight my whole table. And I'm going to say that I only want kind of like a gray border. And when I click off there, I'll see that. And then the other difference is you see some of the borders are missing in the other table. So I'll show you how to do that. Once you highlight your whole table, you click on the drop down near the top right and pick one of the borders at a time. I'll choose the right hand border. And once that's selected, I'll go up to the top here and choose the pencil icon and I'm going to turn that border white and that makes it disappear on my white background page. I'll do the same thing to select the left border now, go to the pencil icon, turn that border white, and I've essentially created a document that looks a lot like the building block they created. And you can of course uh, modify these any way you want to get them to look the way you want. And if you have a lot of information on your table that you want to add in here, there's even a new option for a page list Google Docs, if I go to File, Page Setup, I can opt to have a pageless page, and this is going to allow me to widen out this page kind of as much as I need. If I need to add more information here, I won't be restricted by the width of the page, but more the width of my view. One of the features that is helpful with these tables is actually adding a link to a Google Doc or a website. To do that, I'll use Insert Link. I can use the link icon from the toolbar, and when you hover over that, you'll also see the keyboard shortcut. On Mac, it's Command K, Windows Control K. Or I can go to the Insert menu, scroll all the way down, and Link is near the bottom. When I click on this Link option from either way, I'll be able to search some of my recent files here so that I can find the thing I want to link in the chart. I can link to these slides, and when I click on the link, it will add in the name of the file or the website. And the really cool thing is that then when I click on that, I'll see a preview of that, which makes it really well incorporated into these building blocks because then I can, can preview it right in here and decide if it's approved. This same search option also works for also works for websites. This is a really great feature. It brings spreadsheet functionality right into a Google Doc where you can draft emails and collaborate with your team right in here in this format.